Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and welcome to the video where we are going to learn how to handle APIs with core JavaScript. It's really not fair to say it core JavaScript, but yes, this is a feature which is in the core JavaScript, but we cannot actually run the file through the node. That's a node limitation, but we are not worried about that. So. Yes, we are in 100 position of handling the APIs. We know about AJAX, asynchronous call. We know bits and pieces about promises. And this video will give us a bit more information about promises. But first, I would like to show you something on to the promises. So we're going to go for promises, promises, JS, and of course, MDN. It's important that you type MDN at the end of it. Yes, I'm looking for promise. And there we go. It's probably one of the my least favorite diagram of promises that is being held up here. So uh, if I just go up here, notice it says promise, fulfill, reject, then asynchronous, then catch. So it doesn't really make sense. Let me try to make some of the sense out of it, what they're trying to say, but it's really, really bit confusing here. I give you on that. So every promises has basically three state. It's being processed, which we are not going to talk too much. So let's reduce it down from three to two of the states where promises usually have. One is it's going to be resolved, one it's going to be rejected. So the two trajectory that goes is uh, fulfill and reject. We're not talking about the pending, that's, that's out of the context as of now. So any promise that is going to be handled fulfill, then you can chain on a list of then methods onto that. For example, here it says then, and again, it can say then and then and then. So we will see the implementation in a second. And if the promise is being rejected, then we want to handle it through the catch, which is basically the error handling part of it. And that's it. That's all this diagram is saying. I know this is like horrible way. And notice here, this is how the code is looking like. So if the promise is handled successfully, then we can chain on these then methods onto that. And that's all you need to know about here. Now moving back on to what kind of API we'll be handling. We will be handling the API of Chuck Norris. In case you don't know who Chuck Norris is, why you don't know about Chuck Norris? I really think that you should do a little bit of the dive. Great character, Chuck Norris, so we're going to study on that. And there is an API resource. And again, a side note, API handling of Chuck Norris, of Weather API, or API from Google, Google Maps, or even Facebook, they just are exactly the same. The API structure changes a little bit. So instead of handling array, you might be handling objects, or instead you might be handling variables. So it just means the same. So we're going to be handling the API of Chuck Norris because it's fun and most important thing in the programming is to have fun, which you have been doing so long. If I click on this API, which is api.chucknorris.io, thank you so much to the creators that you hosted this uh, fun API to play around absolutely for free. And notice here, the usage is really simple to receive a random Chuck joke in the JSON format, side note. In case you are still thinking that I'm gonna be handling the API into some other format, maybe XML or something, those days are gone, and that's why not a whole lot of people use the AJAX request. We still use a bit modern advanced way, so I'm not talking even about the older ways. I'm just directly going for that. Everything now is in JSON format, and that's what it is. So if I click on this API of the Chuck Norris, I click on that, and it gives me a really, really long string, which is not even understandable. By the way, if you are if you are having any of the JSON uh, Chrome add-on having, please disable them. They create so much of the problem in the modern web, so just disable it. If you want to have, if you want to see them nicely, either use a JSON formatter website or something else. So the goal is somehow to receive this information. This is the JSON data. So how we're going to do that? Let me show you that. First and foremost, just note down this API.json api.chucknotice.io. It's available actually on the website, so it's better that if you land on the website and then click up here. Okay, so the goal, the challenge in front of is, I want to make a web request to this guy. Okay, or basically whatever is there on this URL, I want to take it into a variable. Now we're gonna go up onto Google and we'll just open up a console on the side. And we are gonna open this code editor on the side as well, just like this. Okay, why we are doing this? Simple reason, I cannot actually run these codes on my node environment and I can run them on the, the console. Most probably you'll be running these kinds of thing in the 
either a very specific environment like something uh, React, Angular, Vue, or maybe in the browser itself. So they work nicely there. So don't worry too much on that. Now JavaScript actually gives us directly a method which is fetch. And that is all what you need to know. Surely there are various libraries like Axios which can do all of this for you. But right now we're going to go all the way classic. Now fetch is almost, not, not almost, it's 100%. It's always going to give you a promise. And as we saw, once a promise is being resolved, you can just go ahead and chain on as many then as you like, probably one, probably two, or probably three. These are for handling all of the positive response, means a success response. Whatever is going to be the result of this, whatever this is going to say return this, is going to be returned to the next then. What the second, what this first then says, return, let's just say A, A is going to be passed on to this line number three. When it says line number three, return B, this B is finally going to be processed to this then at line number four. So make sure you understand this. The returns that are going to be given from the top actually gets back in the bottom. And if due to some reason, maybe the website is down, maybe something else is going on wrong, then we can just fire off a catch. It is almost a try catch syntax. Yes, I know we haven't formally studied the try catch. I think uh, I skipped that part, but yes, we do have a try catch handling syntax, which looks like this. Try to run the code and if there is an error, handle this code and keep on running the code. Probably I'll add these things later on in my Learn Code Online website based on the request, but probably won't be handling or won't be touching the playlist on the YouTube. It's already messed up. Okay. So how do we do this fetch? We simply go onto the website, we take the URL or whatever the URL we want to visit. And very important, 100%, listen carefully, everything goes inside these codes. If you're going to directly try to have this, this is going to give you an error. I'm going to shrink it for a minute, then I'll come back. So notice, this is how we are going to get it. Now, probably we don't need this much of then. We'll see that how many then we need, or even if we need just one. Then is for good thing, catch is for the bad thing that happens. So let's just say this is being executed. So obviously it is giving us a response back. So let's see what response we get. Uh, we can call it as response, but feel free to call it even Superman. It doesn't ma matter. Response. Yep. I actually make a lot of typos while writing the response. In one of my big course, I did that. Okay, not proud of that, but yeah. And now all I want to do is just want to see what is there on the response. So just throw me whatever is the response. Just show me what you are having. But the problem is if I try to run this code node, which is 10 API, it gives me error. It doesn't, it has no idea what this fetch is. So we have to take this code and that's why we were on the Google and we were having this console. When I run the same code up here and hit enter, this knows what this fetch is. And if you did notice, I'm going to do this one more time. Notice, I'm going to paste this. Notice there's a small delay here. So it's not being executed instantly. This is promise. Something, somebody is doing something from website and it's taking probably a millisecond to complete that. So whatever the response I'm getting, I'm getting a whole lot of things. First and foremost, I'm getting a course as well. The cross origin request is a big subject. Probably I'll make a dedicated video on my YouTube. But this is core essential thing. Django, node base, course is something that you should know. Again, if you want a video on that, let me know on Instagram or in the comments, I'll check that out. Okay, now we get a response here. That is nice, no problem in that. But I'm interested in the body part because surely you might be interested in headers, sending some headers, receiving some headers and all of the information. I am not uh, caring about much of the headers right now. All I'm caring about is what's inside this body. And it says I invoked a property getter, but if I look on this, it's a readable stream. If I open this up further, it says, hey, I don't know how to access this. This is going a lot of things and there is no way I can find it out. Now, if that would be moreover like a node environment, it would be much more uh, explainable here. But right now, all I can say to you is whenever a response body is received, this readable stream is actually uh, we need to convert this into JSON so that we can read it. So how this is going to go, let me show you that. So now that we know that we are receiving uh, this uh, response and this response needs to be in the JSON format. So I'm going to simply say dot JSON and that's it. And that's again a method. 
So now let's go ahead and copy this and we are going to clean this up again, print that out. There we go. And now we get a response and then it becomes a little bit like, okay, uh, there is something going on. The object is there. So Jason brings an object, but I don't know how to even further extract it. And it would be really better if I just add a console log on this one. So I'm going to call this one as API just like this so that we can actually see what we are printing it out. Comma, there we go. This is actually much better, much understandable. Clean that, there we go, and there we go. So API gives us finally a promise back, and this promise is having a whole lot of further things, which is a status. Status is important to see that whether we were able to successfully resolve in a production environment, I would never move ahead without seeing whether the status code is 200 or the promise status is actually resolved. But here, it's okay, it's fine. We're having just fun. And inside this value, which we have converted through uh, response.json, now everything is inside the JSON. So we can extract it up here. But this getting the value, converting it into JSON is gonna take time. So notice here, this is again a promise. And once a promise is with you, notice this API is also giving us a promise. As long as it is in the promise format, then what I can do is I can chain on another then. There we go. Nice and easy. Okay. So, but I told you that this then, whatever it returns, goes into this then. So that means no longer console.log. Rather, uh, what I would like to throw up is uh, throw up this. So let me show you that how this is going to work on. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all of this. Yep and this one as well. This is the thing that we have crafted, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and say return. There we go, that's it. So this is gonna return everything and whatever it returns goes inside this one. Now this is being converted and a promise comes up, so I'm gonna go into this. Let's call it as data. Usually this is what we call in all of the code, that's why all the GitHub code looks similar, but feel free to call it even Superman or Spider-Man. And now I want to see that what is this data? Let's just see that. And I'm going to add a little bit more string onto that. And I'm going to say data is just like that. And have this and a comma. Okay, let's see. Copy all of this code. Move on to the browser. I hate that. But we got no option here. Run that. And there we go. And it says data is. And now we can see that, yeah, this is much more familiar way of having a JavaScript. And I can see that we have got all the things up here. So we got categories and then we got a value. So the value actually holds up the joke that we are looking up for. Surely you can look for created. I can maybe you're creating a web page. So once we are able to extract this value, it makes the day. So let's see how we can do that. So once we are into this, uh, instead of having all of this and holding just printing out the data, I'm going to comment this out. Rather, I would like to extract some of the information here. So I'm going to simply say var, and here's my joke. And joke is holding up into the data and inside the value. Now let's go ahead and try to print out the joke. So let's go ahead and say, give me a joke. And in order to make sure that I'm getting a joke, I like to print out a value. Yeah, again, Chuck Norris style, <laughs> unexpected there. But let's go ahead and copy that and print this out. And there we go. Let's run this one. And there we go. Joke. And Bruce Lee died from a delayed reaction to a Chuck Norris roundhouse kick to the face in the way of the dragon. So yes, Chuck Norris is all about the delayed reaction and stuff, crazy stuff like that. And it would be really awesome if I just can come up a column, a little bit, little bit stuff. And definitely we can go for another joke from the Chuck Norris style. Not everybody likes Chuck Norris style of jokes, but hey, you can do much. I am recording these. <laughs> okay, so Chuck Norris went to ice fishing and caught an igloo, the Titanic iceberg, and a deep and a dead polar bear. Cool, nice. So there we go. Now, the thing is that you have got this joke up here. And this is now stored in just a variable. It's almost like a string to you. So once you get everything into a string format, can you put that on the web? 
I think yes, if you have watched the course entirely, yes, you can do it. Can you store it in a database? No, I haven't taught you much about the database. Maybe some in another, another series, maybe on YouTube, maybe on my website, Learn Code Online. But yes, you got enough of the knowledge that now you can handle a whole lot of things. Now, definitely, I haven't touched much of the JavaScript yet. There is a lot more to explain in the web APIs, in the local host. But again, there's no end of it. There is no course which is 100% like covering everything. There's a lot more that I can do, but I will be touching up a lot of topics later on in some other courses, maybe on Learn Code Online and stuff like that. So I hope you are still enjoying it and you're enjoying this part. So again, uh, there are a little bit more to explain on this Chuck Notice API. Notice uh, this is the one that we used for the random, but if you have a specific category that you want to have, you can actually declare a variable, take input from the user and paste that category and can have a query-based search or qu category-based search. So there is a lot that you can do with this API. And API looks very similar. Uh, right now, this API has very minimal amount of data so that we can dig into it and understand it. We have data and APIs about weather, very common in my app-based courses, Android and React Native and stuff. We have APIs which are like Google Maps API, Firebase API, so the possibilities are endless. But yes, the things look almost very similar to this. Okay, quite a lot. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, go to sleep now. It's almost like really, really late now. Go ahead, grab your iced tea, and I'm gonna take a small nap. Catch you up in the next one.